It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. Hello, everybody. It's such a blessing to be able to come to you once again with the Word of God so we can share it together. And, and I believe in my heart of hearts. I, I believe God's Word. I, I believe it. I believe what Jesus said that where two or three are gathered together in his name, there am I in the midst. And I believe that we're gathered together, though we're not physically together. We come together to worship God in spirit and in truth. We come together to, to we assemble ourselves together. Whether you're sitting at, at home with your families now to, to take in the word of God, where, where we share it together. We come together with God's spirit together. A lot of power in that. We might mention a little bit uh, there's something about that a little later on in, in, in the message about the anointing, the power of God, the power of unity, the, the blessedness of being able to assemble ourselves together and worship God in spirit and in truth and to inquire of his word. I thank God for his amazing grace, for the grace of God that's so amazing, so powerful that God loves us. He loved us in spite of ourselves, loved us enough to give his son to sacrifice his only begotten son on Calvary for our sins. And, and the Bible teaches that, that we should submit our, ourselves, our bodies, like a living sacrifice to God, which is the, the least that we can do. God's grace is amazing. So we're going to talk about something today. You know, I think maybe in the past uh, few broadcasts, we might have mentioned about how some people were asking Jesus, what can we do? What might we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus replied to them, this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom God has sent, that you believe on him. That, that takes a work of God. Now, everybody believes stuff they've heard about Jesus, but to totally believe on him, enough to, to, to go all in, as people say sometimes, to go all in, to receive Jesus as Lord, totally, governor of their lives, Lord and Savior, to get rid of themselves, to submit their lives into the hands of God, to totally become his property, not because we will it, but because God wills it, because he works a work in our life. Well, we totally, we believe, we, we trust, we trust in him and we, we receive him. Now, we're gonna get on into the book, into the word of God. We're gonna go to the book of Galatians, and again, we might be all over the place a little bit today, okay? But we, we, I want you to understand how powerful God is, how powerful his, and how precious his word is, how powerful the, the, the gospel is. And you know what the gospel is, the, the death. We, we say it and, and sort of get through it, death, burial, resurrection, Lord Jesus Christ. People sort of spit it out sometimes, you know, and, and get it out of the way, but it entails so much. The, the, the death, the sacrificial death of Jesus, sacrificed by God the Father himself. God slew his son, the Lamb of God, let him bleed out, shed his holy, righteous, innocent blood, shed his blood the sins of, of, for, for the sins of the world, for the sins of the guilty shed the blood of the innocent for the sins of the guilty. Killed him, sacrificed him. And Jesus stayed dead, dead in that tomb for three days and three nights, 72 hours. But he, 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 he died believing what God promised. That I'm, you stand on their bond, I'm, you're going to die. I'm going to sacrifice you for their sins. You're going to become sin, as the, the Corinthians tells us. He that knew no sin became sin for us. He took on the sins of the entire world. He took everything on for us, was crucified, and he, he nailed sin to Calvary's cry. It was nailed to, to, to Calvary with him. Crucified, took sin to the cross. Triumph, man, praise God triumphed over it, nailed it to the cross, took it out of the way 
from us so that we could be free from sin, stayed dead in, in that borrowed tomb. It wasn't his tomb borrowed because he was just going to use it for about three days, you know, three days and three nights. So he stayed in that tomb three days and three nights, and on the third day of his death, God Almighty raised his, his darling sweet son from the dead, and he is alive forever. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And after so long a time, after uh, showing himself to certain of, of, of uh, the disciples, the, the people who, who believed, after showing himself, he ascended back up in, into heaven, was, was received back into glory. The word of God, praise God Almighty. So let's talk here a little bit today. Let's just get into the word of God. And I hope that God will allow you to hear this message, allow you to receive this message in your heart. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, okay? Ephesians, the second chapter, and let's start here with the first verse. And the word of God tells us, and you, me, us, uh, all believers, and you has he quickened. You has he given life. You has he made, you has he made alive. He's made us alive. You has he quickened who were dead. We were at one time dead in trespasses and sins. We were dead to God. We were separated fr from God. The life of God was not in us. We, yeah, we had the, the breath of life, which is the, the that's a gift of God. That, that came from God himself. God made man, formed him out of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living soul. But we, 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 we didn't have the life of God's spirit in us. We had the spirit of life, but the life of the life of God, the character of God in us. And it says here that we were, what? Dead. Just keep that in mind. We were separated from God. Dead in trespasses, just things that we knew, were, were, uh, uh, wrong, wrong lifestyle, bad lifestyle, bad, just deliberately l making bad choices in life, and dead in sins also. We, we lived with the nature of sin. So all of that had to be put away. So what happened? It says in time past, you walked. Say, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, used to, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Now, in times past, when a person is born again, when they're born into the family of God, the, a new nature has a new creation has been created in that person's mind, in that person's life, in that person's spirit. They become a new creation in Christ, a new creature in Christ Jesus. So things change when we grow in, in the nature of this new creation. We, we grow more and more each and every day, every year we live to resemble our Father in spirit, to resemble God. So it, it says we used to walk that way, okay? Just believers are oftentimes called overcomers, we, and we've only overcome through the overcomer himself, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we live a life of conquering, not just conquering stuff. Yeah, God wants us to, to, to take charge of, of everyday life, things that we need to accomplish in this world. Sure, he wants us to, but we find that our, our main challenges, the, the main, the conquest that we need to make are our own, our own nature, taking charge of, over our own selves, our own nature. We grow in the grace of God. We, we begin to, in our lives to look, to appear, to look like more and more like God from, from inside out. That's, that's just the way it works. So it says this, that among whom, in, in the third verse, among whom you we also, we had our conversation, our lifestyle, in times of past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, praise God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us, praise God, 
has brought us alive, has quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved. By the grace of God ha have we been quickened. That means made alive in the spirit, made alive to God, made alive in the family of God with and through our Lord Jesus Christ by the marvelous grace of God. And he's raised us up together. Listen, that, and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We live in a new, we, we, we have a new citizenry. We, we, we live in a, in a new kingdom. The kingdom of God is, is, is within us. We have a, a new outlook on life. We've, been, we've, we've, we've passed, as the Bible says, from death unto life. We were dead in sins, but we've been made alive in Christ Jesus. Now, in Christ Jesus. So we have received a new birth. We've received a new life. Like God didn't take the, the, our old, the old life we had and just make it better. He's given us a new life. He, he, just, he didn't take that old nature and, uh, of men, that old nature of men, that old sinful nature and improve on it. No, he, he didn't. He's given us a new nature the nature of God through the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the anointing of God. That's what people to understand. Believers are alive. They have been made alive by God's spirit. Nothing else. Not because we, ch and that's what people do. That's why a lot of people think because they stop. Okay, I stopped this. I stopped uh, committing adultery. I stopped raising hell. I stopped stealing. I stopped doing, and I still, and, and what you believe it will. You know, they, things start happening in, in the lives, but it's we're not saved because of our own self-righteousness or, be, or simply because of our own moral efforts. That's not it. We have been saved, made alive by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been quickened. I want you to understand that. Now, Jesus was, was quick. He was put to death and he was quickened. On the third day of his death, he was made alive. And the Bible tells us, if, if we'll go here to St. Matthew very quickly, I want you to follow me now. Follow me in the, in the word of God. Praise God Almighty. In St. Matthew, the, about the 27th chapter, praise God. Jesus died the most horrible death anyone can imagine. Breathing restricted. The body, his lungs suffocating to death with fluid, just all kinds of stuff. The pain and agony of crucifixion. And on top of that, on top of all the, the, the physical agony of crucifixion, the mental agony, the, the, the emotional uh, uh, agony of, of it all, the spiritual agony of having received, taken on the sins of the whole world, and God, the Father, not being able to look on sin, had to turn his back on his son. He turned. He, turned, he wouldn't look at his son. And that's why Jesus said, Eli, Eli, lay me so bad that I, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But thou art holy. He understood. He understood. He, he'd been with, with, with God the Father from eternity as one. Throughout all eternity, one. They're, they're one. When, that's why the Bible said, let us make men. Us. Who is he talking about? The, the wisdom of God. Je Jesus, the word of God. You know, the, praise God. So his, his son has always been and never had been separated from God. But there this time came because of the sacrifice of his son for the sins of humanity, for the sin of mankind, so that we could be delivered. That separation came. And praise God. I just thank God for his divine mercy and grace. That's part, that, 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 that's, that's agonizing. That's agonizing, taking on the sins of the whole world, suffering through all that, shedding his blood so that we could be saved. Now, the, the blood sacrifice was given. Jesus stayed in the tomb, dead, three day, dead now, three days and three nights. On the third day of his death, the spirit of the Father, the spirit of God, the Bible says God raised up Jesus from the dead. He was quickened. He was brought back to life. He brought back to life. And that resurrection was so, let's see, let's, let's, let's go here. In, in St. Matthew, all right, the 27th chapter, and let's see what we have. Let's, let's start with, with, with about the, the 50th verse, okay? Praise God Almighty. All right, now, 
So toward the, the end of his life, when Jesus was, was ready to submit to death, submit, to, to give up the ghost, it says, it says here, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, it, now, it, a loud voice, that doesn't uh, uh, show me a picture of a man who's become so weakened with all this agony, with all this suffering, with all this pain, with, 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 with all this bloodletting, uh, his, his own blood, his, his blood shedding, that he, cause he, like he, he'd be too weak to, to, to holler out, to shout out. But he cried with a loud voice. The, oh, praise God. He yielded up the ghost. He gave up the ghost. And it goes right back to where Jesus said, no man takes my life, but I give it. And he gave it for the sins of the world. And when he did that, the veil of the temple, they were, still pra they were practicing Judaism, the veil of the temple in, in, in the holiest, where, where, where the, 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 the blood, the sacrifice was, was made to God, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, just rocks, boulders, just split open. I mean, God, God preached that this is my son. He, he, God preached the message over, over his, 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 the life of his son. He preached Jesus. He yielded up the ghost, and man, it, it was dark. Darkness just settled over everything, and over all one, somebody, I believe somebody, maybe a couple of people, few people might have gotten saved right there. And, but it says this. It says this here in the 52nd verse. This happened after, after the, the, the three days and three nights in the tomb, but it speaks of it now. It says, and the graves were opened. Listen. The graves of the dead were opened and many bodies of the saints, believers who passed on into eternity, went to sleep, that their graves were opened and the bodies of the saints which slept, those who were dead in Christ, which slept arose and came out of the graves, graves after his resurrection. Listen and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now, after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, his resurrection was so powerful, praise God, man, so powerful, so strong, by God's anointing, by God's spirit, by the spirit of God entering back into that lifeless corpse of the Lord Jesus Christ resurrecting him, raising him up from the dead, so powerful that the bodies of some of the saints that had, that had died, they arose and went into the cities and appeared to many people. Hallelujah. But that's powerful. So that resurrection being still has power. And, and we might speak on it, speak to it in a few minutes, but when a person gets saved, we are to walk in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. Are you with me? Are, uh, praise, are we with God? Are we, are we really, are we getting this? The power of the resurrection of, of the life, Not it has the power to, to give us. See, Jesus is alive forever now, forevermore. And through the power of his, his resurrection, his eternal life, we, he's blessed us and given us a right to eternal life. We have that gift from him. Praise God. We're going to be with him forever, in eternity, with God. Praise God. Just, man, it's amazing. This is amazing, the power of this resurrection. So God has empowered us through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that we were dead in sins and trespasses, but we have been quickened. We've been brought to, to life with the Lord Jesus Christ by the anointing of God, we have been made alive in the spirit. We have received, a, been made a new creation in Christ Jesus. We're a new creature in Christ. And we are to walk in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. Now, this life, the power of this resurrection is so powerful that it gives us power to triumph over sin. Not, not through our efforts. It's because of the work of God that's in us because of the work that God has, has given to us, has done in us, and is doing with us. That's why when a person tells me they cannot forgive, you are still dead. 
When a person tells me that they can, they don't, they don't when they, and they demonstrate it, that they don't love, they, they can't stop lying or whatever, that tells me that they don't have the, the power of, of God's work in them, the power of, of this the rising from the dead, being dead in sins and walking in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. See, this is a whole new thing, thing folks, and it's not something that we did. See, you can't manipulate God. You can't manipulate God's goodness. Some people try to. They try to manipulate God's men and everybody. There are some people in the Bible who try to just lie. You know, the, well, Ananias and Sapphira. We won't get into that. Because they thought they were lying to a man. And he told them, you're not lying to a man, just me. you lied to the Holy Ghost. So you're going to die. And they both did. The Ananias and his wife. They, they, they just did. So people, they, they, they play with a, anointing of God. They disrespect it. They spit on it. You know, they 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 do. They defecate on it. They, they that's the way they treat it. That's the way people treat God. But when you have been born again, folks, when you have been saved, I'm not saying, and God knows you're not going to be perfect. God is working a work in your life, and the Bible says, and and and, and I hear people trying to use the scripture. It's true, though. It's true. It's true. It's true, it's true, it's true, true scripture. But people try to use it as an excuse to continue doing their evil. But we are. We are his workmanship. God begins, he's working on us in our lives, and he'll be working with us on us till we die. Yes, he will, until we're out of here. And then when the rapture takes place, new education begins. I mean, the furtherance of this, with, with and through Christ Jesus. When Jesus died, went to the grave three days and three nights. On the third day of his death, he, he was raised from the dead. And the Bible says that his resurrection was so powerful that the, the graves of some of the dead saints were opened and the bodies of the saints, many of the saints arose and came out of the grave after his resurrection. And that's what happens to, to a believer. You come out of that deadness. You come out of that dead state of death has no more dominion. Sin, the Bible tells us, sin has no more dominion over us. And that's the Bible tells us, we just finished reading it, that we were dead in sins. If you are still dead and held in captivity and bondage to sin, you need to go and come again. That's all it is to it. This, according to my Bible, everything I've ever been taught and, and, and read and studied and shown by God in this, in this Bible. It, it points to a different life, to a different life, different desires, and everything. And it makes it plain that it says that they came out in the 53rd verse that they came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And so when the centurion, this, this soldier, and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. I wish people could get it today. I wish people could get the truth of God today. You know, see, it's a different, what, what? People are always talking about false prophets. Well, when, you, when there's a false prophet, there's always a truth. You know, so, and, and just as well, I'm, Think about it. God's just sort of leading me in it today. What is a false prophet? And people are quick to tell you part of it. People who don't teach the truth. Okay, they will lie on, on God. That's, and they think it's just with His word. But a false prophet. But the Bible tells me it shows me how that Satan himself used Scripture on Jesus. So they're, they're, if Scripture ain't the truth, I don't know what is. But it was pre, it, it, he used that script, not preach, but he tried to use script on Jesus from a place of deceit and falsehood. You know, Satan knows the scriptures. He knows them better than we do, you know. And the book also tells me that the devils also believe and tremble. And, but and, well, it, it's true. He that is of God does what? Will speak God's words. And also if they're of God, a person who's, who's of God, they'll hear. God's word. They, they'll hear it. So what else does it take to, uh, to, uh, to identify a false prophet? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. And I'll, I'll give you just one little simple thing that, that's obvious anyway. Uh, false prophets also claim to, see everybody's claiming to have been sent by God. But God, he talked of some, I've not sent these prophets, but they ran. See, some, but, but they claim to have been sent. They, false prophets claim to have been sent by God. And they'll use the script they have to. 
They have to in order to deceive. So don't, let's not, well, let's, let, we'll, we'll talk about that, that later. But I'm just hoping that, that people will, will be honest, accept Jesus, man, and, and, and truth and honesty. That's why the, the, the Bible in the parable of the sword talks about the only, only, only seed that grew up and made a difference in anybody's life was the seed that was sown in good ground. And that, and that person the good, with the good ground is the person who with an honest, see? See, some people can't do this. Some people can't be honest for nothing. With the honest, and, and I'm telling you, you, if you find somebody like that, you better be very careful of that individual, okay? That's all I have to say about that. But the, those who are saved come to God out of an honest and good heart. Not that they're good, but they truly want to do the right thing. Their hearts are open to God. They, have no, they harbor no ill will. They, they have no deceit, no nothing. They're just an open book to God. Praise God. Then God will bless that individual. But others, no, no way. So let's, let's, just, let's just stick with this right now. We're talking about the power of his resurrection. And if you have, if you have received what some people call the glorified Christ, yes, the resurrected Christ, if you're walking in the power of his resurrection, you are also walking in the newness of life that's only found in Christ Jesus. So let's go. Let's, let's just get something else. Let's go to St. John right quick. St. John, the, about the 20th chapter. Are you with me? Okay. All right. Let's just sort of walk through Scripture in, in, in the Word of God. The 20th chapter. This was also after his, his resurrection. Okay, St. John 20. All right. All right. Let's start. Uh, we're not going to read all this. St. John 20. And let's start with about the 19th verse. This is after his, his resurrection. It's so beautiful that Jesus appeared on, after his resurrection to Mary. They came to, to the grave, to the tomb. He, he wasn't there. And he didn't reveal himself as who he was. That he was Jesus, the, the resurrected Christ. And Mary was there. And, uh, and she was asking, if, if you've taken away the body of, of, of my Lord. It, so tell me where he is and, 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 and we'll go and, and, and we'll take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, Mary, he called her name. And she identified him. She knew who he was. And he said, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and, 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 and tell them I'm going to ascend to my father and your father and to my God and your God. He said, don't, don't touch me yet because I, I need to ascend and, and offer up the blood sacrifice on, on the altars of, of heaven. You know? and, but, and after he did that, you know, he, see, Jesus, after his resurrection, he did a lot of work. You'd be surprised. He did a whole lot of work and some, and some preaching, different places. Okay, we won't get into that. But in the 19th verse, it tells us that after that, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus into a room that was closed off with the doors being shut. <laughs> and Jesus stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his, his hands and his side, and his disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And then said Jesus to them, Again, peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, now, you have to understand, he didn't send all the twelve at this time. Why? Judas, the betrayer, you know, the, the, the son of perdition, the son of the devil, he, he wasn't there. He'd already hanged himself. That, that, was, that was done. That, that was out of the way. But he sent the, the, the believers, those uh, fault, faulty as, as they, they were or who, whoever they were, but they loved him. They followed him. They believed his word. They believed his teaching. Okay? So they, they, they followed him. And he said, I'm going to send you as my father sent me. And then when he had said this, he breathed on them 
and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Okay, but, and he sent it in full glory on the day of Pentecost. But he, he gave them the, this anointing, a special anointing, and he said it in special authority. He said unto them, Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. Now, is this the word of God, is it not? People be surprised at the authority of the church and the authority of ministers of God. Okay, listen. He said, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they, they are retained. And anyway, God gives a story to, to the church, to the saints. You know, it goes right along with giving you the, the, the keys of, of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. People are, can be held accountable, you know. They can be, and in some cases, people have been. I'll show you a case in, in, this, in this book where a person was made to pay for, for their wrong. Uh, uh, one person was, was even given over to Satan. So you, you'd be surprised. But this is all about the living in the power of, of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, having been glorified one, walked right in their midst, into the midst of them with the door being shut, the glorified Christ, walking in, in, his, in his glory, being able to show himself in, in flesh. And as he, he, he told him, he told <coughs> Thomas, I believe it was, he touched me, feel me. So a spirit doesn't have, so I'm not a spirit. A spirit doesn't have uh, flesh and bones. He didn't say flesh and blood because he'd taken the blood and, 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 and put it on the altar. He said, flesh and bones as you see me have. Feel me. I'm glorified, resurrected. So we're gonna we, we we have to talk about this. He said, I'm gonna send you something. So he, he gives us something to help us. And St. Luke, I'm, I'm just gonna read just to set this whole thing up for you. St. Luke the 24th chapter. Just I might read just a little bit of that. He said he's gonna send us something to help us. St. Luke, let's see, St. Luke the 24th chapter. Very quickly, stay with me. I'm going to get back to it here in just a second. Praise God. Walking in the newness of life. We're going to, I got it. We must get that too. 24 and 45. Let's see. Okay. All right. As Jesus was dealing with his disciples, and he told them this. This is what happened first. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Okay, praise God, man. We definitely need that. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, it, and, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. He blessed them, even after giving them the, the authority of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, still on the day of Pente Pentecost, he's going to send it full blast. So we, he, he sends us something, sent the Holy Ghost, and the Bible talks, talks about it, and I believe in John, how he said, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give you a confidence, somebody who's going to help you. I'm going to get, give you the spirit of God, the spirit of truth that will lead and guide you into all truth. What does that mean? Just show you all the revelation of everything, oh, all the mysteries. It, no, he'll lead us and guide us in it, and God will reveal himself to us through, by the Holy Ghost in his word. He'll bless us that way, but he'll help to guide our lives, to help us, even though we live and walk in this flesh, that we can live, live out our lives in the spirit of God and, and doing things God's way and God's spirit. So let's go. I'm going to keep reading Romans the sixth chapter very quickly. It's Romans six. I have to get it. Walking in the newness of life. So we are not a believer is not incapable of being led by the Spirit of God, a walking in the Spirit of God, a walking in the anointing of His Word, or with the anointing of His Word. We're, we're, we're able. 
We're able by God's spirit because of the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can walk in the newness of life. So in Romans the sixth chapter, very quickly, we're going to have to move sort of quickly here. Romans 6, and let's go here. We might have to skip around in here a little bit. Romans the sixth chapter, about the third verse. Let's see if we can get these pages here, okay? Sixth chapter, starting with the third verse. All right. So it says here, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Now, now you have to check out Corinthians too. We're not going to get to it, but let us know in Corinthians that by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, okay? That, that one body being many, okay, so also is Christ. We baptized the, into the church, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We were also baptized into his death. Therefore, Therefore, being buried, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. There it is. That we have been buried with him in baptism, and we've been resurrected in the newness of life, and we're to walk in this new life that God has given us and stop making, ex we, we, we try to make excuses. Well, and it's, well, it's true. We know that God's not through with us, but some people use that as a cop-out to keep doing dirt. You know what I mean? Well, God's not through with me yet. Praise the Lord. And, oh, okay. I, I, all right. But you, you keep on playing with that and, and see what, you don't want to do that. You want to do things God's way. To, to, we are to live and walk in the newness of life. Like the Bible says in, in the fourth verse, so we, we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. We walk in, in, in the new life of Christ that God has given us as new creation, as, as new creatures in Christ Jesus. And the book tells us, right in the sixth verse, knowing this, that our old man is, our old man, our old man, that old nature, our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Now, some people think sin is just stuff that we do, like stealing, I'm grabbing, that's sin. I mean, it's wrong, that's wrong, or, 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 or taking money, or whatever. Sin is deceit. You know, sin is telling lies. Sin, sin, sin is hate. Sin is, is unforgiveness. That's sin. And, we, and that life, that's the, the, the old nature. That life should not have any power over us anymore. Pride, that's what got Satan kicked out of heaven. See, pride's going to get folk kicked out of, you'd be surprised, it will get folk kicked out of a lot of stuff. Because pride is of the devil. And some people are so stiff and hard and cold and rigid, nothing to move them, not even God. Not, not God, not God's word, nothing. They will not move. Praise God Almighty. Let's, let's, let's just keep going. So the Bible says that why? That, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead, so we're dead to this world, so he that's dead is freed from sin. Hallelujah. Dead. So we're freed from sin. And in the 11th verse, it tells us that so to likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Reckon yourselves to be dead unto sin. So let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. We, we owe sin and say nothing. And we, and we can't keep using, well, I'm just human. Okay, I'm sure you are. People make mistakes. Nobody's going to be perfect. But to live in sin, that's something different. That is something totally different. To live as, as a liar and to be known for that. To live in sin, to live in hatred, to live in, in unforgiveness, to live in, or if it's theft or whatever. You know, to live in sin, to live in adultery, to, to, to live in sexual immorality, just to, just to, it's just who you are, your lifestyle. That's not a mistake. That's not a mistake. That is living the life of the old man because sin still has its grip and power on you. 
That, and people need to be delivered. People need to be delivered. So the Bible tells us that the 12th verse, have to read it again. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Don't, don't, don't even play it, it, that game. Don't play with sin. Don't, don't, play with, don't excuse, try to excuse sin. Don't try to uh, uh, avert your eyes from your own sin or from your own pride, your own wickedness, from your own uh, motivations prompted by Satan. No, 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 face it, confess it, get rid of it. L listen to this. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. Uh-oh, here we go again. Walking in the newness of life that's in Christ Jesus, but as those who are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Praise God. See, people can fake love. You can fake a lot of stuff. So the, the, the book teaser, teaches us something that with, with the spirit of God coming to a person's life, a lot of things come with it. When God comes in, so much is produced that you cannot produce yourself. So much. We can produce uh, our, ourselves just... Some people are just good, morally good people. They're just good people. And they can give to charity. We can give to the poor. But it's to, to, to let that be born in you by God's spirit and to come out of you, that's a different story. God, the spirit of God that occupies a person's life and mind, their spirit, that new creature that's in Christ Jesus produces certain things that cannot be denied. And we're going to take a look at a couple of them right here in the book of uh, Galatians while we're over here in this part of the book. Let's go to Galatians, the, the fifth chapter. Let's see. I think about the 22nd verse, somewhere around in there. Galatians, fifth chapter. If I get it. Yeah. All right. Galatians, the fifth chapter. About the 22nd verse. All right, and let's, let's read. Now, so simple, praise God Almighty. There's no way you can plant a tulip bulb in your, your yard and some other flower is going to grow up, going to come up from that. Or, uh, you, you plant a, a pear tree, and, and instead of a, a pear, you plant a small pear tree with a root and all that kind of stuff, root ball and everything. But when it grows up, it's going to produce apples. That's, that's not going to, it's going to produce pears. You, you are what's, what you're rooted in. That's, that's the truth. And the book tells us this, that God's spirit, that everything produces fruit. The, our own nature, man, the, some of the, the, the works of the old man are, are there. Just adultery, fornication, uncleanness, just uh, hatred, all, all that stuff. Witchcraft, just all that, that. All that's of the devil. That's, that's the nature of the old man. That's the nature of the old man. So when God comes in and he, he births a new creature in, in that individual, a new creature in Christ Jesus, when he, when he brings in through the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the authority to, to enable a person, to bring them from the dead, and to enable them to walk in the newness of life that's in Christ Jesus, he deposits a portion of his spirit in them. And this spirit of God produces something, and it cannot, it will not be denied. It will not be denied. And, and the book tells us, unless you want to face the consequences, we'll show you about those in a minute if, if you want to take a look at it. But, but the Bible tells us, but the fruit of the spirit, the fruit, let's just, I, I don't want to take all day with this, but we, we might need to, the fruit of of the spirit. What is fruit? Something that's produced by a source, by, by, by a source, the fruit of the spirit. What the spirit produces in a person's life is what? Love, first of all. And, and that's why uh, Brother John, and John too also chimed in in, in, in the book of First John and, 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 and talked about it. How, how that if a person has the love of God in them, they can't, they don't, they can't hate. You know, hatred is of the devil. 
They, they hate because they're still of the wicked one. People can't forgive because they, they don't have the love of God in their heart. They've never experienced, they've never been forgiven of their sins. They've never accepted, they've never accepted forgiveness from the Lord Jesus Christ. No, they want forgiveness w without, without what? They, without owning up the, well, I'm saying I, I need it without ownership by Jesus. They don't want the Lord to take ownership of their life. So the spirit, though, when it comes in, it's going to produce something in, in a believer's life. The fruit of the spirit, what, it, what the spirit of God produces in every believer is love. Number one, no matter what, love and joy. You ever heard the joy of the Lord is, is your strength and peace. Man, the peace how, can you, how can you have peace hating people? How can you have peace with an unforgiving heart? Or how can you have peace with a deceiving heart? You're just full of deception and lies. People, people lie to men of God, lie to preach. They don't care. They just lie and have no fear of God. See, the, and the Bible speaks of that. People who have no fear of God, there's no fear of God before that. That's, that's talking about lost people, people who are, who are going to burn in hell that, that's, uh, unless, uh, unless God intervenes. Unless God gives them grace, gives them mercy, and allows them to repent and, and turn from their own way to the way of God. You can't do it unless God does it for you. See, some people are stuck, and that's why. Because God has not done anything for them. And they try, they try, they try. They put on airs, and, and it makes them so miserable. Because they, 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 can't, they can't get by. They can't deceive other people. They can't fool everybody. And it shows up. But anyway, the, the fruit of the Spirit, what the Spirit produces in a believer's life. Now, and tell me, it, 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 you think that God's going to have men of God without this in them, let alone people, the, 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 the saints of God, the sheep of God. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. Listen, gentleness, goodness, and what? Faith. Faith, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Faith is trust. Faith is, is believing God. Actions based on a belief and sustained by confidence. Faith, not just trusting God for something, but trusting God enough because it's inside of you to obey his word, to obey his will with, with a good heart, with willingly obedient to God, you know? Obedient to God. The fruit of the Spirit, have to keep reading it, the fruit, what God produces, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, not arrogance, and pride, just full of pride. Uh, and you, you know what a narcissist is, a person so in love with themselves, everybody else thinks. They're smarter than everybody else. They can fool anybody. They, 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 they really do believe that. They're more intelligent than everybody else. You know, they they can get by with anything without without truth. No way, no way. Listen to this. Listen, <laughs> I got to start over. Twenty third verse: meekness and temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ, those who belong to Jesus now, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So if we live in the Spirit. Which we say, we know the Spirit of God lives in us, let us also walk in it. And how can we do that? By walking in the Spirit of His Word. That's what it's all about. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Uh oh. Listen. Provoking one another and ending one another. Let us, let, let us not want to uh, uh, just, just be a, a part and, and function when we're in the, uh, where we can get glory for something, or either just being in the spotlight, or having the attention on us, or, what, or whatever. For some, no, no, that's not what it's all about. Praise God. The fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to read these again. So check yourself out. Is love, the fruit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. So you, man, all these are naturally produced, naturally produced. And faith, meekness, temperance, and against such there's no law. You are not in, in captivity to sin and Satan. You're not in, in bondage to, to sin and Satan. And the Bible says that they and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts if we live in the spirit. 
Let's walk in it. It'll show up in your life. It'll show up in your personality. It will show up in, in your attitude. It, it will. It'll show up, period. But see, so, it, it, and, and God's people, now I believe this with all my heart. Jesus talked to people all the time about, uh, like, we know, we talked about something last week. Why, why do you not understand my speech? Because you can't hear my word, because you're, you're following the devil. He, he talked about this. He, he, and he also made reference to, to certain people that, well, I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Like, in other words, it, it, Everybody can't be taught. That's just the truth. And that's a, that's a sad state to be in when you cannot, you can't humble yourself under teaching. You're in bad shape. You are in bad shape. But let's just, let's just move on. Let's, let's get the word of God here and keep going. Let's, let's go, if we will, to, to Colossians. See, you must have the anointing of this Christ in you. The, you in able to, to be able to walk in the newness of life to walk in the spirit of this resurrected Christ. That's why the Bible says, we're gonna get in Colossians right quick. You've heard it a, a thousand times. We could just quote, quote it, but we're gonna read it. Colossians, about the, the first chapter. And let's, let's see here. Starting with the 20, 25th verse. All right, Paul's talking about he was made a, a, a minister according to the dispensation which God has given to him, the time that God gave him to, to minister to, to the saints of God, to the church, to fulfill the word of God. And he says in the 26th verse, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to the saints of God, to whom God, to the saints, God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you. The anointing of that sweet spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, the anointing of God, the Christ in you is the hope of glory. Yes, we know it's the hope of glory for the hereafter, but it's the hope to, for right now to live in the glory of God, to live by and in God's spirit right here on planet earth. It's, it's, it's the anointing of this spirit that allows us to live and to sit in heavenly places, even while we physically reside here on planet earth. It's the anointing, this mystery of Christ. Christ, is, that's the hope of glory to allow us, to allow the fruits of of God's spirit to be produced in our lives, the Christ in us. That's what it is, it's what he produces. That's the hope of glory. And without that, you, you can't, people try. People try to say, I tried, I'm trying to love them, I'm trying to, and they can't. But why? Because that hope of glory, that anointing, that Christ is not in them, it's not in them. And that's why they have such a difficult time. That's why some people are so hateful. That's why some people can't forgive. That's why some people just live in, in the, with the root and gall of bitterness all the time <laughs> because they've not been born again. They've not been saved. The, their lives haven't been given over to the Lord Jesus Christ. They've not received. That's, that's why they can't help it. They, they're still in the clutches of sin. Christ in you. You must have his anointing, the anointing of this resurrected Christ. In order to be able to walk in the newness of life that's in Christ Jesus, in order to be able to, for the, you, you can't just say, well, I'm going to bear the, the fruits of the Spirit. I'm going to bear love. And you, you can pretend to love. You can pretend to have a good heart. You can pretend to, to do all that good stuff. But to genuinely come from your heart. See, some people have, there's, there's no truth in them. That, that's why, you know, it's, they, they, it's, it, they can't produce because the spirit of truth, the spirit of, of God, the anointing of Christ is not in them. And that's what produces all these good fruits of the spirit, God's spirit himself. Praise God. Let's just move on. This is the power the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ that enables us to live the, the lives that we live right now. So th that's why the book tells us, I'm not gonna read all of it, that's why some people can, you can, you can, you can pretend, people can do a lot of things, but without this true love of God, Cain, the, Cain he had a, a certain kind of love. The, the Bible tells us in John, 
that we're not to love like Cain, who was of that wicked one. So Cain, Cain had a, a kind of love that, that allowed him to do evil. It wasn't the love of God. And people today, they have a, a, a kind of fleshly love, a human kind of love that still allows them to hate. See, it's not the love of God. It, it, it allows them to sin, to do what they want to do. It allows them to, to, to spit on God, to deny his word, to reject his word. That is not the love of God. The true love of God is, and it's, it's talked about in the book of Corinthians. It's 1 Corinthians, all right, I want you to just read this with me. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and, it, and it, it talks about some things just to sort of set it up. We're not going to go through all of it, not all of this, but I, I have to give you this. That's, that's why, see, you can pretend a lot of things. You can pretend, you, people, you can play church. People do it every day, you know. But, but to have the spirit of this, this, this new life, the spirit of this, this resurrected Christ in you, producing the fruits of the spirit. And the first one mentioned was love. There's no way you can love and, and hate at the same time. No way, no way. So the, the preacher starts off talking about it. He says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, I, though I give a good sermon, as, as people say, you know, a good speech, and, and that's a very, oh man, some very powerful uh, orators in this world, some, some, some people who can, and I, 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 I know I enjoy listening to, to some of the most, uh, the, just almost insanely like pro prolific uh, speech makers, and some, some are just, they're good, and, and, and they pour their hearts and souls in, into certain things, and, and, it's, and, and it's good, you know, it sounds good. But I'm talking about the gospel now. I'm talking about the word of God, okay? I'm talking about God's word. God's word, not just speak, not just speak it. Because a lot of people, they, they take this word and they can quote scriptures and they can speak and talk, but if they don't have God's spirit in them, if they don't have the, the, the God's spirit producing the fruit of the spirit in that person, it's all about nothing. And that's why this writer said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. I irritate people. It gets, I irritate people with an ear to hear. I can make some of the greatest speeches of all. Like I, I, I can talk about Jesus and, and, and the goodness of God. But if I don't have charity, and, and the, the book calls it charity instead of love because it, 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 didn't, it didn't want it to be confused with, with just people throw that word around like it's nothing, love. They didn't want it to be confused with just common everyday fleshly love or lust or anything like this. They wanted to make it plain that this is talking about the unconditional love of God that can only be given by God's spirit. If I don't have that, if I don't have the unconditional love of God in my heart, if I, a gift, if I don't have this gift of love from God, did you know that the Bible says that, that we, we loved him, why? Because what? He first loved us. Love is a gift, and people don't have this, not this right here. So that's what this, this, this preacher's talking about. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, make good speeches, knock people off their feet, all this kind of stuff, and I don't have unconditional love, charity, the love of God, I am become a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, check this out now. You, you people have to, you have to know, pray for discernment, please. <laughs> pray, you deserve it one-on-one, it's right, right here in the book. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. See, people can know a lot of things. But unless you have the revelation, baby, of the Lord Jesus Christ and the revelation of God's word, listen, the, th given to you through love, God's spirit, God's unconditional spirit of, 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 of love and truth and, and mercy, and have all faith so that I could remove mountains and don't have charity, I don't have charity, what does it say? I am nothing. I can prophesy, yea, the Lord, thy God says this and that and that. Look at Balaam. Just check it out. Just, just check the word of God. Just, just check out the scripture where 
where, where the, the, the certain king, had, he had prophets. And, and, uh, and, and God uh, called, called the spirits together and said, now who can I convince this man to go down and, and fight a battle so, he, so he'll, he'll uh, just die, you know, be defeated and, and die. And this spirit came before me and said, I will. I'll convince him. I'll go down and be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets and, and, and tell him to go and he's going to be successful so that he will die. You know, so you, you know what you're doing. No, Balaam was a prophet for hire. And when he, and so, and he just, no, oh man, he was a wicked, evil man. So when he, when he found that he couldn't uh, uh, curse him like he was going to be paid to, he, he led him it, it, on down the line, the story goes, he, he led him into idol worship and everything it's because he knew that would bring the wrath of God on. Another king knew that that would, that would put him in bad shape with God and God's, God's chastisement would follow him. So though I, I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And if you are nothing, if without this, it says I'm nothing. But if you're nothing, you're not a child of God. If you don't have love, the unconditional love of God in your heart, you, man, you, you, you're lost. You're lost ball in how weeks. I don't, it doesn't matter about how much I can speak, how well I can speak, or, 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 or what, what I seem to know. A lot of people bank, uh, they, they think they're going somewhere with Jesus because of what they know. You know, I mean, knowledge is important. Please don't misunderstand that. Knowledge is so very important and, and useful. But anyway, let's just let's read this. And it says, though I give, uh, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity suffers long. Charity is long suffering and is kind. Charity will put up with things from time to time. And charity is, is kind, it's not mean and cruel and cold and hard and stubborn. That's not charity. See, that. That is, not, and some people live like that every day and think they can fool folks, you know, because they display a certain. See, people like that is it's almost like on, born in on, on, on having some kind of some issues going on. You know what I'm talking about? Some some stuff going on with them, different sides of them. Okay, charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. You know what envy is? Like a cruel form of jealousy. Charity vaunteth not itself and is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly. It seeks not her own. It's not selfish, not controlling. Come on. So, some people are so very, even in relationships and everything, so very, and will fall out with you. I'm telling you, yet I'm very just controlling hard, you know. God, my, my way of the house, just, 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 just like that. It's, it's awful. That, that's not Charity, that's not the love of God. Charity does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked. <coughs> Uh-oh, that, that's a good one right there, not easily angered. It thinks no evil. Charity rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Charity, you know why? They love to not just hear the truth of God and the truth of God's word, but in everyday life, they rejoice in truth. They rejoice in speaking truth, not just what is true, but it, with honesty. With honesty, they rejoice in the truth. T to be an honest and truthful person means that you live without the burden. And that's, that carries a weight of, of being a liar. That's like wearing a, a cloak of, of, of Satan. You know, that's what it's like. Because the Bible says, it talks about he was a murderer from the beginning, he was a liar. And he, when he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. He's, he's lying through, you know, he, he uses his children the same way to tell lies. That's, that's what, what, what that means. So it says, anyway, it says, it does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not our own, not easily provoked, thinks no evil. It rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Charity, unconditional love of God, bears all things. You know, we put up with things when we have to. We believe all things, of all things pertaining to God especially, pertaining to his character, pertaining to the word of God. We, we don't try to exempt ourselves from what God says, this is the way the church ought to live, or the way believers should live, or the way believers should think, or whatever, where it, go, it might go from there, but that's not, but, but see, that's, that's the way some people are. Charity believes all things 
and hopes all things and endures all things. See, charity, see, charity will get you through. Charity will never fail you. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. That's the truth. You, you have to have the wisdom to know the difference. You have to, you have to know whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I thought as a child, and some people are stuck in childhood, spiritually and otherwise. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's time to grow up. People need to grow up and, and live the life that God has laid out before. Some people will deny, deny. Why? Because they're stuck. They've not grown out of sin or nothing. They're, they're just stuck. And that, that makes you feel sorrowful because they, they cannot escape. But I, I'm not going to stay like it. Stay right here. We, we, we're going to have to move on. And let, let's go. While, while we're doing it, let's just go to, to, to St. John. St. John the 15th. Show you how important it is that you do bear the fruits of the Spirit. Charity. You've got to have that unconditional love of God. You must have it. Show you something right quick. <clears throat> People play with God. Don't take him seriously. This is what happens in the, the book of St. John. Okay. 15th chapter. All right, here we go. We're not going to stay here. Okay. Let's see. St. John, the 15th chapter. All right, let's start with the first verse. Here we, here we go here. The words of Jesus. I'm going to close out here in a few minutes. Jesus said this, I'm the true vine. I am the true vine. So if you're not in, in him, you, no matter what you think, feel, believe, or whatever, if you're not in Jesus, if you're not in the true vine, you're in a false vine. If you are in a certain vine, now that, there's no... No grape vine that's going to produce anything else but grapes. You're going to, you're going to be, the, you're going to be produced. What's going to be produced in you is the image of God, the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the fruits of the Spirit are going to, what, what, who he is. As the, the Bible said, as he is, so are we in this world. That's who we're going to be. And he said that I'm the true vine and my father it's the husbandman. My, my father, God the Father, makes, makes the fruit come for it tends, it tends the vine. You know, and not only is he the, the husbandman, he, he is the root of it all. He is. He, he's the source. He's the trunk of it all. He, he, he's, he's, he gives, he is the nourisher of this vine. It, it, all, all his his care, his love, his, his, his uh, cultivating. It all, it's, man, that, all this is coming from the Father. In this, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband man. So consider yourself as, as part of a vine. You're part of the true vine. And because he said, every branch in me, in this true vine, and that's who the saints of God are, we are branches in this vine we call Jesus. This, the, the, this, this, this Christ. This life of God that we, that we found, that we received through the Lord Jesus Christ. He says that every branch in me, every believer in me, that beareth not fruit. Did we just read about the fruits of the Spirit just a little bit ago? Yeah. If you don't bear fruit, he says, I will take it away. He says, I'll kill it. I'll, if you don't bear the fruit of God, see, believers, especially if they got a, a, a tad bit of stubbornness in them, believers will be taken out of here. You, you, you refuse to, to you say, I, I'm saved, I love God. And, and if you really do, if you really do, your life will be cut short, okay? If you don't bear the fruit of God's spirit. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. But every branch that bears fruit, what will he do? If you bear fruit just a little, and, and that's, your, that's your desire. You want the fruit of God's spirit to, to just be, be just, just prevalent in your life. You, you, you want them to come out. You want, you want, you want to blossom for God on, on every end, all the fruits of, of the spirit. That's your desire. You, you want that. 
And God knows it. So he says, every branch in me that bears fruit, I'll purge that. I'll cultivate them. I'll keep them clean. I'll, 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 I'll clip away the, <laughs> the little dead twigs that might try to grow off and keep insects off or, or whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll keep them fertilized. I'll cultivate that, that, that branch. I'll take care of it. Why? That it may bring forth more fruit. He said, I'll keep it going. He said, I'll purge it that it may bring forth more fruit. See, God will bless. So we are definitely a work in progress, okay? But we, we, don't, we don't resist God. We don't resist his spirit. We don't resist his word, nor reject it. We, we, we fall in compliance with God and submission to God. And, and he will continue to bless our lives. And, and you talk about a happy person. A person who, who is, when, God, when the spirit of God is producing all these fruits and they're growing in the grace of God, that's a, that's a happy person. That's a true believer. And it says, now you're clean. You're clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. So abide in me and I in you, said Jesus, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. You cannot make yourself love anybody. That's why people can't love. You can't make yourself to, to just automatically and, and, and just regularly for, forgive, as, as, as Jesus taught us to pray, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Some people can't do it. Some people can't forgive other people's sins like, like they want God to forgive them. But he, and remember, he did say, if you don't forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your sins. So just keep all that in mind. So he's saying here, uh, about, you, can't, you can't produce this stuff by yourself. You can't make it happen. No. But he said, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. That's why it is not happening for people. That's why, that's why these, the fruits of the Spirit are, are not being produced because they don't abide in the vine. They're not in Jesus. They might be in a church. They might be in a religion or some, some group or whatever they, they believe in or, or whatever. They, just, some, just some organization, okay? They can be an organization of the world church living God. You know, I saw, I'm not just talking about any specific denomination, just anything. It doesn't necessarily mean that. But unless you are in Christ and Christ in you, you won't be able to, to bear these fruits. You won't be able to experience the, the, the glory of God, the glory of the anointing of Christ. You won't be able to, to, to experience the living and walking in the power of the newness of life that's in this resurrected Christ. You won't be able to, fit to, to, to do that because he says, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in, in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, said Jesus. And listen, and ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him. The same, if you abide in Jesus now, and he did not lie, listen, he, no. He, he didn't say, well, maybe sometime he made no exception. He that abides in me and I in him, the same does what? Brings forth much fruit. Read that over again. When we get, just study through this when, when we go off the air. People who abide in Jesus, when they've been born again, they, 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 they're, they're part of this, the, the vine. The, 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 everything that's produced in their lives, the fruits of God's spirit that's produced in them, they, they, they're going to bear the fruit of God. The Bible says, if you abide in me, and I in you, the same brings forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. But if a man, a woman, boy, girl, if a man abide not in me, if you're not in Christ, you can be a member of a church, and the truth can be right there. At the, but if you're not in it, and the truth is not in you, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. He said, I'm going to throw them into hell. What do you think he's talking about? He's, he's, he, he's talking here about, about people go, going to hell. That's, that, that's what he's talking about. So, so he, he goes on to talk about, about love. Let's, let's, just, let's just go on down here. Uh, seventh verse. He, he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask me what you will. And it shall be done. Because you're going to ask in accordance with the will of God, with the word of God. And it says, herein is my Father glorified. I'm going to bring glory to God. That you bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. 
If ye keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have spoken these things to you. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I've loved you. And, and that's, that's just plain and simple. That's just straight up. But you won't be able to do anything. You won't be able to, to, to bear the fruits of God's spirit because you can't bear. It, that's like saying, well, I'm an apple tree, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bear pears. You can't do it. But, but that apple tree cannot do it. I cannot say, I'm going to bear the fruits of God's spirit. And, and God's spirit, if God's spirit wasn't in me, it's the spirit that, that, that quickens. See, it's the spirit of God. It's the spirit that does the work, the flesh prophet. Now, do we get make stuff happen? And that's why so many people struggle with this, this believer's life because the life of the, again, of this resurrected Christ is not in them. Now, if Jesus, which it did, not just him, but if that, his life, his resurrection had so much power to bring dead saints out of the grave. To, show, to give them new life, what do you think that the power of his resurrection does for us? Hallelujah, Jesus. That we can and that we do and that we shall and we will live and, and walk in the newness of life that's in Christ Jesus. I, have a, I, I gotta read a couple of more to you. I gotta, gotta give you this. Praise God. You know, and you know, you know what the, the kingdom of God is. Some people wanted to uh, force Jesus to tell him, well, you tell me, where's the kingdom of God? Is it over here, over there, down the street, around the corner? But he said, the, the kingdom of, of God is not a place you can say it's over here, over there. The kingdom of God is within you. And, and it's a whole kingdom full of joy, and peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. This, it's all spirit. This king, and we live in this kingdom, and this kingdom is alive in us, in this, in this new creation of God that's in Christ, in Christ Jesus that is in us. We've been made a new creation and we live in the kingdom of God. That's how we, that's how we do. We do. We live in, in heavenly places. We sit in heavenly places because we have the, the, the kingdom of God within us. And it's joy, peace, righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Now we, we, have, to, we have to get this. You got to be willing to turn loose. Some people cannot do it. You know, but Remember this, uh, for future reference, uh, the book of Peter tells us something, that judgment must begin at the house of God. That's, that's, where, that's where it all starts. It must begin. I believe in my heart. We're living in the last days. I, I believe that. I, according to the word of God, I believe all this stuff we're experiencing all at one time, just the economic collapse, COVID, just worldwide pandemic stuff going on. Violence continues to be on the rise and increase. Just, just everything, all this stuff, man. It's just like Jesus said in St. Matthew 24. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And I pray to God, I, I pray that he'll have mercy because I want God's people to be ready when, when, when he comes. See, some people refuse, they're not. They're gonna be, when the, when the rapture takes place and the church is snatched out, they're going to be sitting right here wondering, you know, what to do next. You know, they, you know they, 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 it's, just, it's just a shame because they, re, they reject God. That's why we, we got to get some things in order. Judgment must begin. Remember that. Must begin at the house of God. And it talks about it in the, in the book of Peter. You ought to read that. First, uh, first Peter, about the fourth chapter. But let's, let's, let, let's go on down. We're going to talk about some things. That's why... This, this man of God he, in Galatians, he said this, he said this, and so we're talking about resurrection and new life and all that. Let's, I, I, have to, I have to get it to you. I want you to know the truth. The book of Galatians. Galatians again. Over here in the New Testament. Galatians, the second chapter. Just a couple of verses. And let's see here. Okay. Let me show you with this, what, this writing here, the second chapter, the, the 20th verse. I am crucified with Christ. It's me, my flesh, my nature, the old nature. So this. So that's why a believer 
has like a dual nature. The nature of the old man didn't say, I'm going to make you all new. Okay, that old nature is there, but we have a more powerful nature. This new nature, this new creation that's in us, this new creature that we call this new, new man, this inner man, this new man, this new creation of God that's in us, this new being, this new person, this heavenly nature that God has given us. And that's what his own nature, he's, he says here, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, praise the Lord God Almighty, in, in the, this new nature, yet not I. It's not just me living this life, but Christ lives in me. That's what allows us and gives us the power, the strength through his anointing, through his resurrected life, to love one another, to care for one another, to, to give, to forgive, that's, that's to, to, to bear the, the fruits of God's spirit. It's all about Christ living in us and, and through us. It is about Christ in you, the believers being the hope of glory. That's the only chance you have. You can't make it happen by yourself. It won't happen by you trying to be a good Christian. It won't happen. It will never happen. It says, never, yes, nevertheless, I live Yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, even through my natural life, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Listen, for if righteousness came by the law, or any of my own moral virtues, or moral goodness, or my own efforts, then Christ is dead in vain. So we, 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 we can't be made righteous without the righteous one, without the righteousness of God that's in us. We can't live this life without him. And I, I just hope to God that people will surrender themselves, surrender themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ before it's forever too late. Before it's too late. Some people always waited a day late and, and, and a dollar short, you know, before they, 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 they wanted to, to repent, but they found themselves too late. Even in the book of Revelations, talked about all the plagues in the 16th chapter, starting about the 8th and 9th verses. You, you, you check it out. It, it, it talked about all, all the plagues that are coming during the great tribulation period. And those people are so hard and so wicked. This, this is the way they are now, today. And this is the way they're going to be in the tribulation period. The sun's going to be so hot, it's going to scorch men with foul, these plagues. It, you just read it where we go off the air. And it, and it said how these people gnaw their, their tongues with pain and anger and act or just stuff and anguish and everything, but they repented not to give him glory. Isn't that something? That's the way. That's pe I know somebody like that. I know people like that who will not, no matter what, they won't give God glory. They won't repent and, and turn. Up to, that means to turn from their own way, whether it's not just something you can see on the outside, but in your heart of hearts, turn from your own way to the way of God, man. And, and allow God, allow God to work a work in your life. That's the problem with some people. See, God's never done it. They did. That's why when you hear people talking about, I was born this, and I've been, I was born in the church, that, that, what does that mean? I mean, that's a good thing. I thank the Lord for that. It's a blessing to have people born in, into the church and have a church family. Okay, that's, that's fine. But have you been born into the family of God? That's the thing. Once you grew up and reached the age of accountability, it just, it just grow and, and it became just commonplace for you to sort of fit in with, their, with everything and everybody. See, that, 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 that makes a big difference. That makes a big difference. We're going to close out. The book of Joshua, this is what happened to, to Achan. Joshua in the Old Testament, we're going to close out here in just, just a second. If we can here. Praise God, I tell you. Joshua had a, had a time. We talked about this just a little earlier. This man here, he had a brief window of opportunity, <laughs> I believe. I, I believe that with all my heart. He had a brief, brief window of opportunity to, to make it right with God, to, to get it right, to come clean. See, some people, ain't, they won't do it. The way I am, when I deal with people like that, I, just, I, just, I, I let them go. No choice. Have no choice. Listen. Okay, uh, Joshua, about the seventh chapter, and let's start here. Okay, well, we're not going to read all this. It, 
God had told, he, they take this first city, it was first fruits of God, I think it was Jericho, and, and God told them, don't take anything, don't take any of the spoils, nothing. Just let it all lie. Just leave it alone. Just, it's, fir it's your first victory, first fruits to me, say, saith the Lord. So it was the city was in the cursed city. That means curse from you. You, you can't touch it. Don't buy it. It was a curse unto God. It was like sanctified for God. That's what that meant. That's what that meant. And they, but somebody did something wrong. They took something and hid it in their tent. And uh, they, they didn't think anybody would know. See, that's what people do. They, they think they can hide stuff. And that's wrong. And some people think they can hide stuff in their, in their own life. The, 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 you think you can hide who you are. That's, that's right. You, you can't. You, none of us. We just talked about that last week. That, that everything is open to the eyes of God. Everything is open to the Word of God. And Joshua prayed because they had another battle that should have been an, an easy victory, and they wound up being put on the run. They wound up being defeated. And he said, oh, God, why did you allow this to happen? He said, Israel has sinned. Because one person, he said, Israel has sinned. The, the, taking something that, that, was, that, was, that was forbidden to me. And, and, and man, when Joshua started praying and, and asking God about why all this stuff is going on, People knew what he was doing, knew he was seeking some kind of relief, an answer from God. You know what, you know what this man, this, this man Achan, you, you, you've heard the story many times, so we're not going to get into it. The Achan, he should have just come clean. He should have said, oh God, I'm so sorry. See, people are too proud. But they, they push it to the last minute. I, I can get away. I can get away. No, you cannot. Achan could not. Nobody ever know. Yes, some, somebody knows. See, that's the thing. They, they don't. They don't even think God's important. They, 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 they think people, what people know about me is, is shameful. Not, but I'll do anything in front of God. You know, I'll do just whatever. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll live and look like the devil in front of God as long as nobody else ever knows. See, that's what people think. They, they think they can hide, but we can't hide from God. And, and the way that people act is like God's way, God's will, God's spirit, God's presence is not important. What God requires, it's not important, as long as they can hide. You can't hide, my friend. Nobody, none of us can hide anything from God. All things are open with, with, to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So this man had opportunity to bring it forward, to come forward and to say, oh, I'm so sorry. This is what he, he never did. I'm sure he probably would have been punished for it anyway. So it, it came down to God told him, we'll call the nation together, call, call, call Israel together. They separated them by tribes. They separated them by tribes. They separated them by families. It came down to they were trying, like deductive kind of thing, you know, Elip the process of elimination, okay? And it came down to, to this certain family. It brought the, and he brought the family of Judah, and, and from the family of Judah, he, he took the family of the Zarhites in the seventh chapter, seventh verse, and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. Uh-oh. And he brought his household man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, or Carmi was taken, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said, my son. It was too late then. But still, he, he had to come clean with God. If he'd just done it a little early, if he, oh God, if he did just completely repent and fell on his face to God and asked for mercy, confessed his sin, he, he might have been punished or whatever, but he, he might have been spared. The life of his family might have been spared. And Joshua said, my son, give, I pray thee, give glory to God. Give glory to the God of Israel and make confession to him and tell me now what you've done. Had it not from me. It, it was too, Joshua, I'm sure, back then he knew. He just, the man just had to tell the truth. That's all he had to do. It's too late now for exoneration. And he did. He told him, he said, I did, I sinned. I, I, I saw a, 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 a Babylonish gar, a garment and, and some money, 200 shekels worth of silver, and I, I was greedy for him. I covered him. And I took him and I hid him in, in my tent in, in the earth. See, that's where it is. 
and that this man, because of that, they, they sent people to dig it up, found it because of his sin, doing what God told them not to do. His whole family was taken, burned with fire. That's, that's just a shame. God told somebody else that too, I, I believe, to in Jeremiah, I think he was talking to Judah. We're going to close out. Praise God. But, but people will not. They won't. They won't repent at all to give God glory. They won't turn from the old to the way of God. They, they will not. God have mercy. Not, don't even know how closely the, the confession, forgiveness, all that stuff is tied into healing and every, everything else. Hallelujah. People just, they don't know. They don't know the ways of God. Let's go here. The book of Jeremiah. Let's see here the 13th chapter. Let's see if we can get that right quick. Judgment must begin at the house of God. Jeremiah, the 13th chapter. Starting with the 15th verse. Hallelujah. And he said here, and then one more after this. And he said, Hear ye and give ear. Be not proud. That's, that, that's normally what gets people. No, no they'll never, they'll never, they'll, they'll never bend. They, they won't break. They, they believe they'll stick to a lie no matter what. They'll stay right with it. Listen, <laughs> it's funny. I'm going to tell you about, about something in just a minute. This, it's just funny. Uh, They'll stick to a lie no matter what. Hear ye give and give ear. Be not proud, for the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God before he caused darkness, and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains, and while ye and while ye look for light, he turned it into the shadow of death, and make it as gross darkness. But if you will not hear, if you not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride, and, and my eye shall weep sore and run down with tears, because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. Your life will be carried away captive. You can't be too proud to honor God with truth and confession. That's just stupid. That's just stupid. So I'll go talk to the Lord. You, no, you got to do it God's way. You have to do it God's way. So if, if you hold an honor against somebody, you've got to do it like Jesus said. You go talk to that person. You need to clear things up with, 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 the, with the minister. You need to, you've got to do it with that person. Because God is not going to let you skip his order at all, the way he's laid out for things to happen, and, and you just show up in his face smiling. That's not going to happen. Don't believe that for a minute. So I'm hoping that this will happen, and we're gonna, I'm going to leave it right here in Jesus' name. The book of Isaiah, the first chapter, he's talking about how religious they were and, and uh, all the... The songs, even the offerings. Sometimes you bring your offerings and everything. So it's just, just wicked. So your heart is not there. Lift, even to, to you lifting hands and praying and all that. You say, away with all that stuff. Because he knew the people's hearts were evil. And, but he gave, he gave them a chance. He, he said this. He, it's, well, one, Jeremiah 1, so with fi the 15th verse. You can, you, can, you can read. We're just... We'll, we'll, we'll read some of it. 13th verse, bring no more vain oblations. That means offerings, vain, because your, your heart's not, and, and you're cheating anyway. Bring no more blame, oh, 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 vain oblations, because incense and abomination, the new moons, the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, the holy days, in other words, I cannot away with. I'm tired of your religious show. Your new moons and, and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They're troubled to me. I'm, I'm weary as to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, like to pray, when you spread forth your hands, what he said, I will hide my eyes from you. And when you make many prayers, I won't hear. Listen, this is God now. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil and to not forgive and to, to, to constantly lie and deceive. Deceive. Man, that's, that's awful. That's, that's a, a, a character of Satan. Listen, put away evil, the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless and plead for the widow. Come now, saith God. Listen at this. Come 
and let us reason together. And it, it, it's, it's like this. Now, please don't misunderstand this. Well, I'm going to go and debate with God and explain to him why I don't feel like it's this. Don't, don't do that. That's not what God is saying. See, God's not going to change his order and his way, his word for anybody. Me, don't, don't matter. Not if, if, if Paul and them were still running around, he wouldn't, for nobody, nothing. So and that, that's what people want to do when they say, well, I want to talk to you about something. They might want to tell you, but they don't, they, they're not going to be honest. They're not going to be clean. They're not going to be truthfully honest. They're not going to be forthcoming. And they, they want to talk, but they don't want to, you to talk to them. They don't want you to tell them the right thing to do. I've experienced that and, 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 and felt the resentment almost immediately of telling people the right way to go. And it's funny how people call you about everything. Oh, well, we did this and that. This is when our, But they never called to let me know that I did, I, I did what you told me to do. And this is because they never did it. They, that's, that's why. See, that's a deceitful person. What people do, they try to get a feel for where you are with them, you know, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. You can't deserve it. You don't, don't, do, don't even think that. So, so all that deceit, all that guile and treachery, that's, that's garbage. And God sees. He said, now come. And to come to God, man. Come to the Lord. I'm not God. I'm talking about the Lord. Do it God's way. Come, listen, come now, let us reason together saith the Lord, and though your sins be as scarlet, no matter what the deal has been, this is opportunity. And to, to, to turn it down, you're just saying, I want to go my own way. I don't need you, Lord. I don't need your intervention. I don't need your advice. I don't need to do it your way. Leave me alone. That's all they're saying. And you, you just, you, you, you're asking for, for the worst of it. But he says, come now, let's reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, that's the key. Willing, not just forced into doing something just to I'll do this just to get out of trouble. Uh -uh. If, if it's in your heart, I'll be willing and obedient, saith the Lord. Ye shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse, and rebel, this is a prophecy today, coming from the word of God, coming out of my mouth today. If you refuse and rebel, you, are, you shall be devoured with a sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. This, this is God. This, he, he, he gives people opportunity. He said, you can take it or leave it. So I've given you a choice, said the Lord. No, it's, and you, you eat the good of the land, just come now. Let's reason together. Let's do the right thing. Praise God Almighty. God is saying, do it my way. Do it my way. Do, obey God. Obey the Lord, folks. I'm telling you, you want to live and walk in the newness of life that's in Christ Jesus. And if you have been born again, if, you, if the Spirit of God dwells in you, if the glory of God abides in you, the anointing of the Christ is in you, you'll be able to live you, and, and love and forgive and, and do the right thing. But all that other stuff, that's of the devil. That's of say malice and, and unforgiveness and resentment. That's guile. No, guile is deceit. Praise God. That's, that's, that's satanic. That's of the devil. So, hallelujah. Hope God has touched your heart. Hope you make it right with him. Time's running out. Believe that. Judgment must begin at the house of God. Okay. We say goodbye and may God bless you until the next time. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.